there was a, I don't think we talked about this on Friday about the breakfast club and their commentary around Risa Tisa and the name calling. Cause I, you know, while Friday is a day that I'm here for all manner of, um, you know, fun and, um, <laughs> you know, sometimes we'll be a little messy. Uh, some things I don't want to, you know, give light to. But uh, there's a headline, the headline's going on that Charlemagne issues an apology to Risa Tisa for, you know, referring to her as a big back woman, which, you know, some of y'all might chuckle at the big back uh, commentary, but it sparked a lot of uh, interest. And uh, so I just want to read the apology a little bit because I, I feel like um, it it was kind of not an apology. <laughs> uh, first, he said, I disturbed that woman's peace. That was not my intention. And I know Clay and Reese, uh, Clay talked about this today as well. Um, 866 801 He said, um, that was not my intention. And if I said something, <laughs> I apologize. Like if I hurt her feelings, I apologize. Uh, note to everybody, you know, when your apology has an, if I said something that bothered you in it, or if I did something, you clearly did. You did it. An apology should be unequivocal, meaning you should just, I'm sorry for hurting you. Can you say that? How hard is that? Why do people have such a hard time apologizing? And here's the thing about the apology. It, it doesn't take anything away from you as a person. It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you make you a simp. It doesn't make you a punk ass. It doesn't make you soft. It's just acknowledging that you caused harm. Not if I did, you did. You absolutely did. You did, you did, you did. Or else there wouldn't have been a need for an apology. And I don't know who um, asked you to um, apologize because I imagine that perhaps, um, you know, somebody said you should. Um, but. I just, I feel like grown people, you're a grown person, a real grown person. It's okay to apologize. As a matter of fact, this is healing for everybody. And and those of you in arguments and conflict, it usually stops the conflict because to sincerely apologize, he said, so I apologize if my words made her feel that way. They, it's not my intention. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. All of that, you don't even have to say. Just apologize. So I wanted to juxtapose that to Cam Newton. Um, cause you know, when Lamont was on on Friday, he, you know, talked about Cam and I hadn't watched Cam's apology and I'm not on his YouTube channel or on his social media. So I didn't know, but that's how you apologize. And he apologized without any, nobody asked him to like this. You, you on the radio calling this lady big back. You don't even know her, you, you, but you're insulting all people who, uh, you know, carry weight. And, um, you know, saying that they are desperate and thirsty and all, it's, it's, it's too much. And you're almost 50. I'm saying at some point, raising children, at some point you want to be an example. I was just talking during a break about apologies. Again, I'm not talking about Charlemagne the God. I'm talking about how we apologize. Um, I think it's important to acknowledge uh, the harm that you've done and it doesn't take anything away from you without saying, if I harmed you. Because that, even framing it that way, immediately you know when i hear that i'm like you're not taking responsibility for this this pain right um who, who agrees disagrees 866-801-8255 and then i wanted to play um we were talking on friday you know because foods is friday is that i i may or may not have you know uh i'm not going to deeply think about anything on friday i just want to really enjoy and use these uh these stories as an entry point for jokes because we have comedians on, not experts. Um, but some of the comedians are experts in the things that, that we talk about as well. But Cam Newton, we were talking about the fight uh, that erupted at one of those uh, camps and how, you know, a few of the former uh, coaches from his seven on seven bum rushed him um, or some, you know, trash talk happened and people, you know, came and tried to jump him. And it didn't end. It didn't end well for them, you know, as he was grabbing bodies and swinging the bodies, not throwing punches, but people. Um, and then he apologized, which I thought was very. I mean, this is a man that's thirty three years. I mean, he's, 30, he's a young man with enough sense to know that that wasn't a good look. And while people were taking sides and cheering him on, 
he recognizes a bigger, bigger picture here because young people are watching and how he conducts himself is important. I love that. I love, I love that. And, and the space for growth, play, play his apology, Smith. More violence could have stemmed from that. Yeah, anything. And it, it, it's just not called for. And on top of that, it's, it's echoing something that's been permeating for years. Black people. Why, why, why I got to be at a black event? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I could easily say, damn, like I can play the victim and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hold myself to that same standard, bro. To say like, look, everywhere that I go, people talk. People say, yo, why you didn't jump on the fumble? Hey, yo, Von Miller, your daddy. Hey, yo, like Mac Jones took your job. Hey, yo, Brock Parody is better than you. Hey, yo, like she, you a free agent. That's that's normal. I'm used to playing in front of a hundred thousand people mm -hmm. and millions watching. And I let one person dictate how I feel. No, I can't do that. But I did that day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, even with that, so talking to KO Kendall, my girl, mm -hmm. when she talked to me, it's like, baby, it's, I'm glad you're safe first. Yep. But are you looking at it through the lens of what if one of your hands was free? What if you did punch him? What if you did throw him over the balcony? What if they would have broke your jaw? What if they would have knocked you in a coma? These are things that, yeah, we laugh about. These are things that, yo, like, yeah, cam hat stayed on. Yeah, some Mashika plug. Yeah, go buy a Mashika hat. Yeah. But I'm lucky to have this opportunity to be standing as a witness to say, don't be like me. Be better than me. Come on. All right. That's it. So and I this, can... this y'all can watch the rest of it. Yes. Yes. And it's, it absolutely d takes nothing away from Cam Newton to say those words. As a matter of fact, I think it elevates him in so many ways, you know, and it also sounds like he's got wise counsel. I was just thinking about that. You know, we've been talking about this kind of thematically on the show. Like, who do you spend your time around? Are they people that egg you on to be the worst version of yourself or the best version of yourself? Who's in your life? Who's in your life? Do you have wise counsel? Plans fail for lack of counsel. With many advisors, they succeed. Do you have many advisors around you that would come and chin check you over something, even if you were right in the moment to protect yourself or whatever? Because, you know, that, that can get into your psyche, too. Where, you know, they came at you and you did what you had to do. Or do you have somebody that will give you the bigger picture of your better self? I like that he went and talked to his lady and she told him mm -mm, this could have gone a whole different way and had him, you know, and maybe he would have seen it himself. But again, a lot of times we have people in our lives as sounding boards. But if the people in our lives are sounding boards that are yes people that will regurgitate back the thing that they think we want to hear then we need, to, we need to have a better circle. And some of you are like, well, I don't even have a circle. We need to find a circle because we all need somebody to bounce some things off of. And it can't be in your own head. Mm -mm, mm -mm, that's usually never good <laughs> to just have yourself because uh, most of us are narcissists who think we're always right. So you got to have somebody to tell you that. Mm -mm. And not somebody to just tell you that you're wrong, you know, but somebody that, that, that is trusted that will tell you when you're wrong or give you the nuance, nuances of, like in this case, because I don't know if he was wrong to defend himself and, you know, uh, but maybe he was wrong to escalate it. Because, you know, when you are uh, dealing with somebody of low vibration who can't handle your words and want to hit you, you know that. And sometimes uh, those of us who have words like to egg folk on so that we can't put our hands on them. That was always my tactic. Nobody was dumb enough to <laughs> to actually do it. Boy, I would try. Because my mother told me, you know, you can't put your hands on somebody. So I would antagonize the F out of people. And then they, they must have thought about it. Never happened. Never happened. But what it taught me, too, is that the life and death, death is in the power of the tongue. You can destroy people with your mouth. And you can lift them up and breathe life into them. You have a choice. And I love that Cam Newton apologized in that way. It was a very, very... Uh, grown big person thing to do. So hats off <laughs> or hats on to Cam Newton.